All right, being that we're in the uh, town of the East Liverpool Review, of course, owned and operated by the wonderful Nutting family, the same people that have, well, the naming rights and the ownership of the Pittsburgh Pirates, uh, just in the last hour trending, Hall of Fame, July 30th. They will be inducted in Cooperstown, Jeff Bagwell, Tim Raines, and Pudge Rodriguez. So congratulations to those former major leaguers headed to the Hall of Fame. Now, Aaron Rodgers, many believe, will be in Canton in the Pro Football Hall of Fame when it's all said and done. Green Bay 10-6, 305, takes on Atlanta 11-5. Falcons still, as we checked the line earlier today, a four-point favorite. Now, let's take a look at what happened in Week 8. Falcons got by the Packers 33-32, and it's still a lot of money being put on the Packers in Vegas as we speak. So, Ted, because of Rodgers and the amount of money that continues to be placed on the Packers at the Sportsbook in Las Vegas, do you think that line will change? And if so, how? Well, I, I think... Uh everybody's looking at Rodgers as a miracle maker. And, you know, obviously the more they look at the game last week, which was almost an impossible win, uh, they're going to look at him and say, you know, he's going to be able to pull it off. He, he has the number of wins in a row, uh, whether it's eight or nine, and he just seems to be indomitable right now that uh, he can pull off, uh, you know, the, the Hail Mary passes and all of the, the strange things that he's done. But, you know, it's more than just Aaron Rodgers. I mean, certainly he is an unbelievable quarterback. And you would hate to think of having Aaron Rodgers with Atlanta's receivers. It may be the most scary offense that would have ever existed. But it's Aaron Rodgers without those kinds of receivers. So uh, I would, I think there may be a lot of hype on, on Aaron Rodgers right now. You might see the line change because of that. But I think... Uh, I, I still think Atlanta, if you look at all their weapons that they have, uh, has to be, in my opinion, the favorite to win this game. You know, after those two got together in Week Eight, it was hard to believe. It's hard to believe that the Packers are where they are now because Indy they lost, Titans they lost, Redskins they lost. Nine six and one, they ended up on the regular season, but then they covered the spread in the playoffs against the Giants and Cowboys. So has it been? Has he has become Laser Rogers as in the way he's throwing the football now compared to the regular season? Has that been the big difference? And also trending about an hour or so ago, it looks like Jordy Nelson is still going to be out with those banged up ribs. So what has been the difference that has turned them around? Because it's the same number 12. But it, 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 you know, it, it almost looks like a reflection of New England. You get the, the number 12 there uh, behind under center and strange things happen. And it doesn't matter who the other players are. He makes them all better. And I think Aaron Rodgers is doing that. And he's got uh, the line that's completely believing in him. I mean, you see them playing hurt. You see them going off for a couple of snaps, coming back in. He's got, he's definitely got the mojo going for Green Bay. And it does, it does rotate around his shoulders. But, you know, he's got a good defense, not a great defense. I think the defensive backs are, have been injured. They're suspect. So you're, you're, you know, it's not just Aaron Rodgers. They've also got to stop Atlanta. So that's what's going to make it a great game. This could be another 32, 31, 31, 30. Who knows? But it could be another game just like that. And it could be Aaron Rodgers in the last 30 seconds. And if he's got the ball, you know, these things can happen. Uh, you know, he. everybody looks at that Hail Mary pass and you look at and say, wow, that's just really lucky. Well, it's not lucky if you look at the trajectory of the way he throws that ball really only one person could have caught it so he, he's you know he is right now on top of his game and that's what's great about this weekend in my opinion you've got three almost for sure hall of fame quarterbacks and matt ryan knocking on the door i mean what a great ending for an nfl season 10-6, and six, the Falcons ended up the regular season. They easily covered the spread against the Seahawks. And when you think of covering the spread in the playoffs, that means confidence. And both of these teams have a lot of confidence. Some keys to victory for the Falcons. The, the Ryan Express, if you will, Matt Ryan, has got to roll. The defense has got to get to Rodgers. And even though they've got that great combination, meaning Matt Ryan to Julio Jones, Devontae Freeman, they have got to establish a running game. Your thoughts about those or maybe some others that I missed, keys to victory for the Falcons, Ted? 
Well, you, you got Sanu that's sitting out there. That's, you know, in, in many, many teams, he'd be your number one right wide receiver. So he's got, with Julio Jones and, and the receivers that he's got, and they've got a, a great tandem running game. So they can establish the running game, which gives Matt Ryan, who's got an extremely fast release, the ability to hit these guys. And Julio Jones is just a monster. I mean, the guy is just a physical specimen. He's... You know, not that shy of being uh, the same size as some of the smaller tight ends, but with speed and hands that are just unbelievable. And you got Ryan who can throw a laser like ball. So it's, you know, I, I don't know how you could have better four teams going at it than you have this weekend. It's just, you know, it, this has got to be a dream for the NFL right now. All right, before we move on to the late game at 6.40 on CBS, KDK TV2, Steelers in New England, uh, keys for Green Bay. It would be nice if Nelson could come back. That doesn't look like it's going to happen. Ty Montgomery, not one of the biggest, but if he can make a splash running the football. But here's where I think the big key is. If Clay Matthews can just be half the player he was a few years ago, because he's flirted with it at times, but he hasn't been able to kick it into that second and third gear, if he can get back, that would definitely help their chances. Forget about all they can do on offense, but I think Clay Matthews is a key for Green Bay in this football game. Well, absolutely. You look at what he did last week by both causing a fumble and going 10 yards downfield and recovering a fumble when everybody else was standing around. He's got the, the mind to really anticipate this game, and he was playing kind of out of control. He was playing very, very well, which I think people overlook. That's one of the big things that uh, the Packers had. I mean, they held a very, very high-powered offense in check this weekend. Yes, they did come back. Uh, they did make up some ground in the second half. But, I mean, you look at that that offense that they were holding down, it, it's pretty high-powered offense. So Green Bay's got the defense. But they only have to have enough of a defense to let let uh, uh, number 12 come back and outscore them. And uh, Rodgers certainly has shown the proclivity to do that. Just some of the great pictures that you can have framed if you love the Steelers and who doesn't that Mr. Savage does here at Legacy Studios. So drop by or check them out on Facebook. Pittsburgh 11-5, and five, New England 14-2 and two again, CBS, KDK TV 2, 640 Sunday. But you know what I keep thinking about? Ben Roethlisberger and how good he is on the road. This is definitely something that's going to, I think, be a, a big plus for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And that triple threat, Ben, Brown, and Bell, I don't think you could ask for more offensively than what the Steelers have to offer, Ted. Well, yeah, and they've got, you know, the, once again, uh, our boy Jesse James is coming through, and I think he's going to be one of the keys to the game because there, you know Bill Belichick is going to do everything that he can to take away uh, two of the B's, and he's going to certainly put a rush on Ben, and he's been successful in defending the Steelers before. And, yeah, they beat the Steelers this year. Of course, Ben wasn't there, uh, but Gronkowski was there. So he, you've got a, a negative on them and a huge positive for the Steelers. But what a lot of people forget about is, is uh, New England's defense. They're the top-ranked defense in the NFL, and everybody kind of blows by that because you go focus right in on Brady. But Brady's got these unbelievable receivers who are completely in sync with him. And it reminds you of Antonio Brown and Ben. I mean, those two are completely in sync. So, you know, it's going to be what is Belichick going to do to take away Brown and Bell, and how do we counter that? And I really think Jesse James is going to wind up being one of the keys to the game. All right, you know, something else, Coach Butler's defense. Got a couple of sensational young players, and as Ted mentioned yesterday, because we're in the postseason, it's like they're second-year players now. Artie Burns out of Miami came in the first round, Sean Davis in the second round out of Maryland. I like their aggressive play, and they're going to need to be aggressive because LeGarrette Blunt, the former Steeler, is going to be used as a battering ram, I believe, by New England and Coach Belichick, and that takes us to the keys for New England. Brady more involved than he was, obviously, against Houston. That running game, using Blunt, as I mentioned, to beat up the Steelers' front defensive line, and also Ryan Shazier, a very small middle linebacker, something that Ted pointed out last night. Also, 
dumping the football to Deion Lewis, who had himself a great week last week, receiving touchdown, also a rushing touchdown, and a return for a touchdown. He, of course, out of the University of Pittsburgh. And Julian Edelman and Danny Amendola can really catch the ball at any place on the field and make up a lot of real estate quickly. So those keys to the game for New England, Ted, and maybe a few I missed. No, I think you pretty much hit it, and uh, you know, blood. It, it scares me with Shazier because Shazier, as fast as he is, is a bit undersized, and you can just see Belichick uh, with that hooded sweatshirt in the game meetings, uh, isolating and double teaming some of those uh, defensive linemen so that they can get at Shazier, and uh, I'm sure that's going to be one of his his big keys to his game. But the Steelers have shown, uh, you know, it's not just Shazier. they got four really good linebackers. So I, I, it's going to be a great matchup. And, you know, certainly defensively, they're going to try and take away Bell and Brown. Offensively, you know, they've got those uh, possession receivers that just allow Brady to march up and down the field if you don't stop them uh, with Edelman and Amendola. Uh, and then, uh, you know, there are – it's, it's – they're – High-powered offense, but it really, if you look at it, a much higher-powered defense. Martavius Bryant looking for reinstatement. He is seeking to get back into the game. But, of course, you look at Antonio Brown and you look at Eli Rogers and what they've been able to do with their wide receivers. You have to think about Richard Mann, their wide receivers coach out of Aliquippa, the, uh, the Aliquippa Junior High team uh, back in 1970. He was on the 1964 WPIL Aliquippa champions. And he also was on the coaching staff of Bill Belichick back in the early 90s with Cleveland. And today Bill Belichick was singing his praises. He has done an incredible job. And, yes, all of those wide receivers that I mentioned, meaning Antonio Brown, uh, also uh, Eli Rogers, Ted talking about Jesse James, they're going to be such an essential part if the Steelers are able to move on to Super Bowl 51. Other keys, this is what I look towards, Ted, something you talked about again last night. Ben has got to figure out, once in the red zone, not to get the three, but to get the six, and hopefully the point after, as opposed to going for those missed opportunities we've seen time and time again, two-point conversions when they have to make up points late in the game. Look more to their tight end, Jesse James. I think that really got the running game going, and I think Le'Veon Bell, just being Le'Veon Bell, will be good. But also, I think Eli Rogers will be a key in this game because Antonio Brown is definitely going to be double teamed. So those are my keys to the game for the Steelers. Your thoughts? Well, and you're absolutely right. That's, those are great observations. And, and you know, everybody's kind of sitting on the edge of their seat seeing if Ladarius Green is going to be able to play because he opens up a different aspect of the tight end. Uh, but they're not sure whether he's going to be able to play. He's had those health issues all year. And he's questionable right now. So, you know, but you know, there's some of the other lesser known uh, receivers that could become important for the Steelers. Because I agree with you, if, if anything, Belichick is sitting in his war room right now uh, doing his X and O's and doing anything that he can to fill those gaps quickly and break down, not penetrate too deep so that they make Le'Veon Bell have to shift when the holes aren't there. And if they can, if he's got them so that they're attacking the ball, not attacking too deep and can keep the holes, Le'Veon Bell's going to have a rough time. Um, and so Ben's got to be able to pull those linebackers away from that line. And that's going to be the key, I think, to the game. How can Ben complete the short passes so these linebackers over the middle can't collapse on the line and start penetrating the way I think Belichick is going to have them do? 6.40 Sunday, CBS, KDKA TV 2. Steelers will be at New England. And by the way, New England, a five-and-a-half point favorite, as according to the uh, Vegas book, as of today, Wednesday, January 18th. Of course, more coming up tomorrow night with yours truly right here. And then Ted and I get together with the guys, Greg Dulles and Bob Dvorak, on the Coons Market Black and Gold Sunday show at 11 from Coons Market on McKnight Road. And don't forget, 93.7 The Fan the entire way right up until kickoff. Have yourself a great night, and thanks for joining us tonight, Ted Arno and I, of course, from Jimmy Joe Savage's Legacy Studios in East Liverpool. As we say goodnight, we'll show you a little bit more of his work right now.